All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So, today is, uh, is a lecture note day. So, go ahead and get that going. Um, all right, guys, bring it in. Okay. So, we've been going through uh, valence electrons. We've been figuring out how to count the valence electrons. We've done, uh, you know, electron dot notation, electron configuration, all of these things. So let's figure out why, hey, be careful with those. So, but why do we care about valence electrons? First off, what is a valence electron? Outer, outer shell. Why do we care about the outer shell and not the inner shell? So what is it? Easier to manipulate. Yeah, those are the ones that actually interact with things, right? So, for example, if I take this and I'm moving it towards justice, eventually it's going to hit something, right? Did it hit his spleen? No, obviously not, because his spleen's on the inside. Right? So, basic idea is inner uh, electrons don't get messed with. The way that an atom will interact with things is based on its outer shell, based on its valence electrons. All good? So, how many valence do these guys have? One. One. How many do these guys have? Two. Two. Based on what I just told you, what is going to be behaving in a more similar fashion. Potassium and rubidium, or potassium and calcium? Which ones are going to be more similar in how they behave? Potassium and RB. Yeah, potassium and rubidium, right? Because they have the same number of valence electrons. They have the same same uh, uh, interactions. Okay. We all good there? Yes, sir. So, to continue that on, all of these guys are going to behave in a similar fashion, right? So lithium, sodium, potassium, all of those guys are going to behave similarly, right? Uh, and number two, same way? Yeah. Same reason, right? We all get there. So actually, um, in fact, we call these different columns, we haven't gotten into the actual the name of this, we call these different groups because way back in the day, before we had a periodic table, we knew about these different elements and we were like, hey, this thing, let's call it lithium, okay? it, it has these properties. And hey, we have this other thing called sodium, hey, it has those properties, it's a very, very similar properties to it. So we're going to put those all in the same group. Makes sense, right? Later on, we start figuring out we can put all of the same group in the same column, and the periodic table starts making more sense. So we call uh, these guys uh, alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, so on and so forth. Down here, we already, what were the name of these guys? Noble gases. Noble gases, because all of them have how many electrons? Valence electrons. Eight, eight, eight. eight valence electrons. Eight. <clears throat> okay. These guys are called halogens. Halogens are pretty important. They're pretty, um, they're used quite a bit in chemistry. They're movers and shakers. Um, wh why are they movers and shakers? They're really close to being a noble gas, right? So, does that mean that you think they're going to be easy to react with or hard to react with? Hard. It's hard. Quite hard. Because the noble gas is very, very reactive. Right, right. I'm saying, I'm saying halogens. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven. Hard. Ooh, we got we have disagreements. Okay. So, think about it. 
Uh, do the halogens really want an electron? Yeah. 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 They're they're primed to get one more electron and get that octet, right? So if, since they're primed to get one more, they just want one more. They're going to want to try and grab it from wherever they can. Okay. They're going to want to try and grab that electron from wherever they can. So they're going to be very very reactive. They're going to interact with other things pretty quickly. What about these guys? The next group over, 16. They're all going to act the same way. Uh, do you think they're going to be as reactive? No, because they need two electrons now, right? OK. In the same fashion, moving back over here. Are they going to be reactive? Yeah. In fact, if we finish, I'll probably do this tomorrow if we don't, if we don't get to it today. I'm going to show a little uh, demo of how reactive uh, solid sodium is, just sodium by itself. Actually, let me show you how we store it, because that may show you how serious we take it. One sec. Now it's in this can, right? Inside this can. Inside this can. I have a bunch of gravel. Inside this gravel, I have a plastic bag. Inside the plastic bag is a container. Inside that container is a bunch of kerosene. And inside the kerosene is the solid sodium. Very reactive. It reacts with water very, very quickly. The water in the air will start reacting with it. So we don't really want to play around with this too much. We don't. Yeah. Except, you know, water is kind of flying all over the place. Like, you know, dripping off our clothes and whatnot. So, super reactive. Uh, okay, there's that. Uh, probably about a piece the size of my thumb. Oh. Well, a good size piece. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's. I would consider that a, a pretty decent size piece. Okay. Pretty reactive. I'll show you exactly what it does when you toss some in the water. Okay. Later. Tomorrow. If we finish today. Sure. So. So there's that. We all good there? You kind of see how how this works. What about carbon? Carbon there. Do you think it's going to be very reactive? No, not really, right? Have you guys ever heard of, you know, like charcoal? Charcoal, are you, am I ever worried about charcoal blowing up or anything? No. Charcoal is pretty much pure carbon. So, pure carbon, it's not going to react. Makes sense, right? Because it has it has a ways to go to get to that octet. It's kind of like uh, it's kind of given up on its dreams of getting an octet. All right, you can think of it that way. It's uh, the reality is a little more complicated. So you can kind of see how the periodic table, the best cheat sheet in the world, has a lot more information in it than at first. Because it, all of these guys react in a similar manner, these in a similar manner. That's why it kind of looks the way it does. Not only does it have to do with the electron orbitals. Actually, we, we set it up this way long before we knew about electron orbitals. Because they reacted the same way. They had the same properties. So we knew all of these guys should be in the same group. But we knew that hydrogen's heavier than lithium, or lithium's heavier than hydrogen. Sodium is heavier, potassium is heavier. So we can make it go this way, too. We can order them that way. So there's lots of ways that you can, you can do things. Um, for a long time, there was a big hole in the periodic table where tungsten is. We didn't know. We didn't, we didn't 
there was no element of tungsten. Like naturally, we couldn't find it. So, but could we, you know, have could could we tell something about this mystery element? Yeah. Based on everything else, right? So we knew about this mystery element that we didn't know was around. We knew it had some similar properties as chromium and rubidium and things like that. Gotta make sense. Elder. We all good there? Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So, I'm gonna go through and talk about some of these properties now. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna talk about it for a little bit, and then I'm gonna uh, have you guys split off and kind of talk about it amongst yourselves. What I want you to do, you guys remember free responses? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna practice some free response stuff. So, the way it's going to go is you guys are going to, uh, I'm going to talk for a little bit, then I want you to just kind of summarize what I said. I'll tell you like a specific thing. And basically just write out a paragraph or two. These are science paragraphs, not English paragraphs. I don't need a topic sentence with, a, with two supporting sentences and blah, 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 blah. Just the way I consider a paragraph is it's a point. Each paragraph is one point. Now, that paragraph you might have to need some evidence for that point, right? So that's where the other sentences come in. But one paragraph is a point. Or like one, like Topic. I'm making a point. Yes. All right. We all good there? Right. I'll tell you how I'm going to split it. All right. So first thing we're going to go over is something called electronegativity. Uh, if you're on keycable.com, you'll see electronegativity right here, spelled just like it sounds. Uh, electronegativity. Electronegativity. This is the property of an atom uh, that uh, is how strongly does it pull on electrons? Okay? How strongly does it pull? On electrons. Just by based on what you know, what do you think like really electronegative atoms are? Where are they? Where are the ones that really are going to be pulling on electrons? The far right. The far right. This way, right? So these guys are going to be really pulling on those electrons. What about the noble gases? They will not, right? So these guys are going to be really electronegative. What about these guys? Are they going to want to pull on electrons? No. So hold on to that thought. Uh, okay, there's that. So one thing I like about P-table is that if I click on any of these things, it'll make a color-coordinated map to where the like the the really electronegative things are going to be darker. The not so electronegative things are going to be lighter. So let's kind of see what we get there. There we go. So the dark guys are the really electronegative stuff. And the lighter guys are the less electronegative. Okay? We all good? Uh, actually, I'm going to go linear scale. Don't worry about that. Okay. <laughs> so, um, what, where do you start seeing them getting electronegativity assigned to them? Well, okay, I'm going to say this. These guys are just because they don't exist for very long, and we don't know much about them because they're pretty rare. So we can't really study them if they exist for like 0.3 nanoseconds. So we uh, we just kind of leave those blank for now. Um, but these guys we do know something about. These guys have d orbitals and f orbitals that they can mess around with. Okay, so they, they're going to kind of break some of these rules. And, uh, okay, all right. So. First off, you guys are right. If I'm moving this way, what happens? 
It gets darker. More electronegative. Makes sense. You guys were right on that. Good job. But what about if I go from top to bottom? Not, uh, don't worry about this middle bit, but right, right here. It's a little bit lighter. So as we're moving down this way, we're getting less electronegative, right? And as we're moving this way, we're getting less electronegative, right? So if we put these two arrows together, we have really electronegative stuff up here, and down here, not so electronegative things. So remember, electronegativity is how much you're pulling on your electrons. Right? So why is that? Why is it that these guys up here really are little electron money hungry Rubbing things that just are constantly like, all right, give me a little electron. Why? Hmm. Let's look at this a little bit. They weigh less. They weigh less. Ooh. Okay. You're you're starting to think of things. Well, these guys are super heavy though, right? That's a lot of protons, a lot of neutrons down here. Right? Okay. So let's kind of think about this. I mean, like, the top right, since they're lighter, are more... These are, these are more electronegative, which means they're going to pull their electrons, pull electrons more. Okay? These guys are the electron-hungry guys. Okay? So what's going on? Well, I'm going to show you... Let me get my wonderful little thing over here. So here is going to be my atom. It's a beautiful atom, isn't it? So, magnet, right? Nail on a string. So why is it that electrons and protons come together? Why don't the electrons just bugger off and just float away? Opposite charges, right? Like a magnet. Positive and negative come together. So, Magnet attracting a nail, right? So if I'm uh, about right here, I wish I had a bigger magnet to, to do this, but if I increase this magnet size, what's gonna happen to the nail? It's gonna be pulled, right? So bigger magnet, more force, right? More pull. Second thing you need to think about is when I'm this close, it pulls, right? This is pretty strong charge or pretty strong force going on right now, right? When they're this close. If I come apart a little bit, like this far, it's still a it's still a force. They're keeping it. I'm further away though. And as I go further away, less of a pull. So what else is it? Not just the magnet size, but also the distance between the two. Okay? Think about those two things, and let's look at the periodic table again, okay? What does it mean if I'm going down the periodic table like this? What's the difference between this row and this row? The distance. Distance, but like, expand on that. What is, <clears throat> what does this one actually mean? First. First orbital, first energy level, right? First energy level. What about this one? Fourth energy level. So let's draw that Bohr diagram. First energy level is here. Second energy level is here. A little bit further apart, right? Third, a little bit more further apart. Fourth. A little more further apart. So as you're adding energy levels, what's happening to your magnets? They're getting further apart, right? Uh, this is something called Coulomb's Law. We're going to get into it a lot more later on. If you've taken physics, you might have learned about it. Um, we're not actually going to do much with the math of Coulomb's Law. I want you to know the concept, though. 
Two charges, far apart, less of an attractive force. All good? If I increase one of the magnets, what happens? Stronger force. Okay? Those are the concepts I want you to think of. Just about everything in chemistry can come down to those two things. How strong is your magnet? How far apart are you? Okay. All right. So, that takes care of the distance. This, this care is, takes care of the up and down of this. But let's take care of this. If I'm going this way along energy level two, it's getting more and more electronegative, right? What else is happening as I move this way? Increasing valence electrons, sure. But you're also increasing in what else? Protons. Protons. Which means your magnet is getting bigger. Bingo, bingo. So you're increasing in protons. Two, uh, three protons, four protons, five protons, six protons, seven protons, eight protons, nine protons. The inside magnet's getting bigger, 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 bigger. What's happening to the distance? Well, that's next step. What's happening to your dis? What energy level is this still? Second. Second. Still second. Still second. Still second. Still second. So in general, you're still about the same distance away, right? We all good so far? Does that make sense? Okay. This is what I want you guys to do now. Uh, split up. If you're in a group of three, like you guys, you guys can all work together. Work together. You guys split off into two and two. You guys, three, you guys, three, two and two. You guys, two and two, you guys, two and two. I want you guys to do a free response answer to the following. Explain electronegativity. That's it. So here's the thing though. I'm gonna say a minimum, like one paragraph, two or like, we're gonna say five sentences, okay? But I'm gonna also say this, this is a free response question. Do you, you have to just write words? You can draw, you can draw figures, you can make a graph, anything short of an interpretive dance. Something, yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, this is one of those situations where I'm wanting you to not care if you're right or wrong, okay? I want you to just try your best. Don't flip out if you're like, I don't know what to do. First off, talk to your group. You know? If Simon wasn't paying attention, Justice hopefully was. So you two can talk together and kind of make up each other's differences, right? Try your best, get a full answer. Uh, I would say this, try and get as many points on that question as possible. One of my, um, I love oral exams. I've talked about it before. Oral exams where we just sit down in front of three different professors and they just ask you questions. One of the hardest ones that I got was, explain electronegativity. But you give these us. No, 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 but here's the thing. <laughs> they expected me, a PhD student, to answer it in a lot more detail. I'm expecting you guys to have to do it at your level. Uh, right? <laughs> so, basically just explain what I explained in your own words. Alright? Alright. Explain electronegativity. That's it. So, uh, that's, uh, vague questions like that can be pretty easy or pretty hard, depending on how many points it's where it's worth, uh, but in this case, just try and get as many points as possible. I'm gonna give you guys about five minutes. Just to make sure, clarify. 
this is all going to be just completely great. I am not actually going to be grading this for correction for anything. Okay. So don't you don't need to stress out about like oh god oh no no just try your best. Okay. Get used to it because maybe on the exam coming up there may be a question like this. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, to go from small to big. Down, right? These are small, these are big, right? We all get there? Cool. What about the left and right ones? What do you think? What? I mean, because this is all the same energy level, right? All the same energy level. So they're all going to be the same distance away, right? This is kind of what you were saying before. Yeah. Where the, elect the more electrons you have, the more it'll pull it closer to the core. Mm, not more electrons. It's still the same thing as before. Really? Na more protons. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? If you have more protons, as you're going this way, you get more protons, right? We all good there? More protons, so what does that mean? More protons, bigger magnet. What happens if I have a big magnet? What happens to the nail? It gets pulled close. So if the electrons are all getting pulled closer, what happens to the total size of the atom? Shrinks a bit. The outer shell, it's still a fourth energy level, but it's going from like fourth energy level away to like just contracts a little bit. Okay. So, to kind of show you what I mean, you have three energy levels here. If I'm starting at, you know, sodium, I have a bunch of protons here, and this last one electron gets pulled in a bit. Right? There's a little bit of an attractive force there. But, excuse me. If I uh, go up to the next one, this one gets another proton. They're the same distance away, so these get pulled in a little bit more. Right? And you can keep going on. When you get down to fluorine, this is really huge uh, proton, or a, a big magnet in here because you have a lot of protons. And they're all the same distance away, so they're really going to get pulled in closer. So with that in mind, what's the trend going to look like? So, trend going left and right. Again, I'm going from small to big. Which way is the arrow going to point? So these guys are big? Or these guys are big? All right. So hold on, hold on. Let me let me ask another question. If I have a big magnet, what happens to the to the nail? Pulls them close, right? Where are the bigger magnets along the second row? What has more protons? These guys. So these guys have the big magnets. So what's their shell? Their second shell going to do? Closer. So are these guys big or small? Small. Those guys are small. These guys are? Big. So the arrow's going? This way. Right? So if I wanted to combine these guys, what's the smallest one going to be? These guys. Helium. What's the biggest one going to be? Francium. No, it's, it's made of France. Oh, no. <laughs> the, uh, so they, uh, France is the one that made that. Discovered in Germany. No. <laughs> There's actually a. Um, oh, this happened about oh five, six years ago now. No, 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 longer than that. Oh, geez, I'm getting old. <laughs> about ten years ago, roughly, maybe eight. Um, they, they, they had a bunch of elements that they hadn't named yet, that they made, that they hadn't named. So they were a big conference to try and figure out what the new names are going to be. And so there, uh, and there are things like, um, you know, Moscovium. Guess where that was discovered? Moscow. Moscow, right? Uh, Tennessean. Tennessee. So that, way back in the day when Francium was, uh, was around, guess where Francium was named? 
friends. Uh, or you get uh, you get cases like Rutherfordium, named after Rutherford, Borium, named after Neil Bohr. So, all right. Uh, okay, where are we at now? No idea. Oh! So let's see if you guys are right. Uh, radius. Where's the small ones? Where's the big ones? Down here. So there you go. Makes sense, right? Question two. Explain the trend in uh, atomic radius. Go. When you're done with that, there is an assignment that you can put it in. Periodic table notes. You can go through and uh, submit it onto that. Um, you can either do one of two things. In your group, you can put everyone's name on one paper, or and then everyone take pictures of it and submit it. Or if you guys wrote your own paragraphs, submit your own paragraphs. 